Okay, so I changed things to just a little bit here. You'll notice also that still there's some weight. There's some weight up here on spine three when it should be on spine four. And that's the problem you run into when you uh, when you're just depending on that automatic stuff. You want to try to do as much as you can manually where possible. Okay, and let's uh, add most of the weight up here. But, I mean, that's just my method of doing it. You can do it however you'd like. But let's see how things <coughs> are moving around now. All right. And we notice how the eyeballs don't move with it. That's easy enough to fix. We already have... Wait. Okay, let's change that. That should be neck and that should be head. Usually people just name that uh, for the end there. Okay. <coughs> so we have a head. It moves. Shouldn't move that. Okay. So this is spine four. All right. So I change things up a little bit more. You'll change. You know, you'll probably notice yourself changing things quite a bit. <coughs> so back to the weight tool. <coughs> I probably just want these points to be the neck. Okay, and the head. All right, so we have a head. So all we have to do is put the eyeballs inside the head. Now everything moves around, and that's the same you would do for the teeth. If you had separate objects, you don't have to separate the objects, but I prefer the objects separated. So it's just a matter of preference. Now let's get something moving here. <coughs> I could go in here. Let's select the bone, find the bone, or I could just control, right click, and go straight to the bone. And eventually we're going to solve that problem. So if we hit Q, we're basically enabling this, the hypernerve right here. And so we'll notice things we probably don't want happening. So then we would go back to the weight tool. And you notice if the hypernerve is enabled, you will not be able to see where the colors are at. So, <coughs> we probably don't want that weight on here, so we'd probably want that weight more so on the shoulder than anywhere else. Same with the other side. You can also mirror weights too. <coughs> hmm. Oop. Hmm. Maybe we can set that up on spine three. See how that works out. Hmm. Alright, that works out better. <coughs> and I'm not gonna do too much refinement. This is just a tutorial. So you notice that kind of works okay. It looks a little funny though. So, just explain what you'd do. <coughs> you'd probably put most of the weight on here. Put this weight around here. So when it bends, it kind of looks like the bones that we literally have. When we move, we have a ball inside it. 
in, in places. When we move our bones, our skin moves around our bones. So if this were to work perfectly, when we move this bone, we move him, when we moved this bone this way, uh, the best thing that could happen is the points would slide around the bone, this ball here, but that doesn't happen. And that's why you have to really, really work with stuff to try to get it the way you would expect it to work. I mean, I spent uh, probably a couple of hours just trying to get the weights in my actual working model just just right to, to look fairly good still not real good but it's better than much better than it would have been so instead of just grabbing bones and moving them around here and there <clears throat> every once in a while let's uh get it to where we can actually just grab grab a controller and move the bones around now he wants to go around and move move around the bones and pose everything individually all day long that just takes forever so let's fix that this is where the IK chain comes in so you can set it up manually and you can right click and you can go to character tags and you'll see over here I know you can't see it here but if you go to IK you can, you'll click on IK but we can just select this we want it to end right there go to character commands create IK chain oh it made an object take note of that it made a goal this is the controller right here so if we move that around we'll notice, oh we can move it oh, that's fine and dandy but then we don't, we want to move it up and down. We want to also be able to move where the shoulder is pointing. So we can bring that down to the root. We can uh, Alt G make a group. Connect controls. Ooh, that is not what I wanted. And now we got a group called controls. We got our left wrist goal. And okay, but I'd like to be able to grab it. Okay, display. <clears throat> Let's change the display to something we want. I I like to use circles myself. But you can use what whatever you want. You just scroll through the things here. I got spheres and whatnot. Notice these don't look like that. The orientation is camera. I like to use it like that. There's the orientation. But you can change what it, what it is. It's gonna be a 3D object also. You could use a physical object. You don't have to use a null object. You could use a literal piece of geometry if you wanted to. It would be probably a lot easier to grab, but it would also be a little bit more geometry heavy. And there you go. So if we go back to the IK tag, we can add a pole. And there it is. It added it. Here it is. We can bring that up here. Actually, no. Actually, you can you can do this however you want. You can stick the goal in the pole or the pole in the goal. So this way, you can rotate. You're basically rotating the object within your IK there. So if you move things around, move your goal around, all depending on how you want to animate it. And again, you would. We can undo that a few times. You want to be able to see it. Oops. And if you want to move this separately, but but keep this um, parent-child structure, you can control, click, and drag. So again, to see it, I like to go with point and just orientation. It can be anything else. Actually, was it point? Yes, it was point. So there we go. We can grab it, and we can grab this, and we can also change the color. Click on that. Go to basic. Use color on. Change the color accordingly. We we'll click off of it. It's red. So there's an IK control.